on this episode, we're going to talk about what we played during the holiday break. Then we're going to reflect on what, how awesome 2023 years in gaming. And then we're going to share our honorable mentions that did not make our top 10 list on our last video. This is episode 93, Optional Dialogue. Alright, welcome to Optional Dialogue, episode 93. Once again, I'm your host, Sebastian, and I'm joined by Dory and Mitch. I hope everybody had a wonderful new year. Uh, welcome to 2024. As I said in a previous episode, that this will be our fourth year anniversary in July. So it's been a very fast four years. Um, so before we start, I want to say that we're, we are switching this to weekly. So I'm going to consistently post the episode on YouTube and Spotify every, I want to say, Saturday night to Sunday. It's going to be not the same time, but it's going to be always Saturday or Sunday. So just so just a heads up. I can't promise that it's going to always going to be like exact time. Um, so uh, I've been off for about two weeks. Uh, as a teacher, I have that advantage. I get a lot of time off. Um, it, for winter break, and I've been playing a lot of video games. I made a big change in my gaming, which we'll talk about. Uh, I made the switch to PC gaming, finally, like, full on. I don't think I'm going to touch the consoles anytime soon. And I got mm. a Steam Deck OLED, and, and I'm addicted to it. It's fantastic. Um, I love handhelds anyway, but especially the Steam Deck. Um, and... I, yeah, like it, it was a big change for me because I've been playing PlayStation as my main platform for, uh, mm. God, ten years at least. Um, since uh, the Xbox conference was a disaster in 2013, it's been 11 years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I still. I mean, I, I I don't, I don't remember watching it live or anything at the time. But even just like now, kind of looking back on it, I just remember the residual shame and just beating that xbox took that year in yeah terms of that, the whole console war stuff that was the biggest dunk i've ever seen dunk on i've ever seen in my life like that was like <laughs> we share games and everything it was crazy <laughs> yeah that was Just awesome yeah no i i have always been a pc gamer i mean i've been playing pc since i was little it's just I, I was always mostly like mmos just world of warcraft mm. kind of thing I wasn't like a Steam person. I wasn't buying all my third-party games on PC, so that was a big change for me. So the reason why I'm talking about this because our first topic we're going to talk about is what we what we did over the break, what we played, what what we get for Christmas, things like that. Like, what, what was your experience over the holidays? Um, so let's start with Mitch. First of all, what did what did you get for Christmas? Like, what did what did um, you want and what did you get? Well, I, I managed to um, keep reminding people that I'm in the future because of time zones. Um, so, <laughs> no, but in, in reality, I got, ugh, I mean, as you get older, you know, you kind of get more boring stuff like gym clothes and stuff. Um, but I did get, you know, I got a couple volumes of, a um, couple more volumes of Attack on Titan manga because I'm, I'm trying to, you know, complete the 12 sets of omnibuses that I'm that I need to actually get the whole story. Um, I did also manage to get, um, if you're watching the video version of this, the just a few sets of Bloodborne graphic novels. I had no idea these existed um, until, what, a few months ago. But, yep, I have them. I haven't actually started reading them yet, but I'm Actually, actually really interested into how they, you know, make a very non linear story-based game into a graphic novel. I'm interested to, just interested to see how they depict certain things if it's a one-for-one -one retelling of the game. Bloodborne's lore is so it. awesome. Yeah, Bloodborne's lore oh, yeah. is so underrated. Oh, how yeah. good it is. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Um, yeah, so I, I, I also ended up getting Final Fantasy 16 um, for Christmas. It was a game that I 
I, I hadn't looked much into it, in all honesty. It's um, something that I was like, yeah, look, I'll get it for Christmas. But I, surprisingly enough, just ended up being completely hooked on it. I think I put about six hours in over the course of an entire day. Um, which, you know, usually I don't get to, well, I don't get to play that much, and I don't play that much of a single game in a day, but yeah, this game just absolutely hooked me. Um, I biggest thing I just loved about it was the fact that the story I actually was invested in for once. Like, there's a certain boss battle that happens right before the title card um, that I, without spoiling it, I just went, like, you know, up to that point, I was like, eh, I'm not sure how I'm how I'm feeling about the game. But then, when it got to that point, I kind of understood the direction they were going for the you know for the game and for the story. And at that point forwards, I was like, yeah, okay, I I 100% know. Well, I mean, going with this game. it's only the beginning, and it was the demo. I mean, we talked. You mean the Ifrit Phoenix fight? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah the Ifrit Phoenix fight. So how much? I mean, because I I never actually played the demo. Like, was the demo just literally the first two hours of the game? Pretty, pretty much. I think it was. It pretty was, much, yeah, yeah. It was pretty oh, much wow, the first okay. few hours. Now, how, yeah. Oh, okay. Now, how are you finding the uh, the frame rate in the in the motion blur? Because that was a big criticism. The motion blur was pretty rough in the beginning. I think they patched. I think they patched it, but yeah, I haven't. In all honesty, I haven't noticed any motion blur issues. Okay. Um, I've frame rate hasn't been too bad. Also, I think like there's. There's maybe been one or two areas where, like, I think, like, in certain, like, village areas, there's moments where I'm like, oh, okay, the frame rate, you know, is, is really choppy here for no reason at all. But for the most part, like, in combat and stuff, it's been fine for me. Um, yeah, like, I, I haven't, technic technically was, I haven't really had any issues on my end, thankfully. Um, yeah, just the odd frame rate, frame rate hitch here and there, but, yeah, you know, it's nothing that I've sort of gone oh no i you know i remembered how you know much people were complaining about that when the game came out oh no, no nothing like that right now uh have you done any side quests yet have you because like, no that was big criticism I've, of uh, james and i interesting i've i've only done the like few side missions that you had available like when you like first go to the sanctuary area like a few hours into the game um so like okay main side quests have only so far have just been oh you know give people some plates of food or go find wood yeah for build up or something um it's i mean so far it seems uninspired but but i forget like did you guys what, what was you guys' criticism about it it was the pacing it was like it'd be a big awesome boss battle and big story element and then it'd be like five hours of fetch quests like MMO kind of quest oh, where it was like kill okay. seven of these and then go back and give it back turn it in interesting because the interesting cause... same director as Final Fantasy 14 so Yoshi P so so if, oh. if, if, if it feels like it, the quest felt like an MMO quest if you ever played MMO before in you know kill seven yeah. boars and then turn it in yeah yeah interesting okay um but that's more like in the middle ish like, though like in the more middle yeah to late. so the beginning is more like story driven where it's like straight up game of thrones yes. and then it gets like when you get it open world which i don't think you've gotten there yet like the really open world no yeah you no 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 i've i've only gotten as far as um well the ps5 says 21 percent of the game so like i've just gotten past the the big um icon boss battle between the between ifrit and the wind one i i forget i forget okay him. yeah you're in the you're just, um, it's near the beginning or it's like yeah, yeah. That's, like, that's like towards the end of the demo if i remember correctly it's like the end of the beginning if that makes sense like you're, yeah, you're starting to get yeah. into more of the main part of the game yeah because I, I i've done like one quest after that and then like her I think Jill, her name is. She's just woken up, and I'm and I'm okay. going to visit it. That's where I'm at. That's now, where I've left yep. it. No, just keep in mind though, I'm not. I wasn't like as critic. I wasn't as critical as James. Like I'm more in the middle. I wasn't of uh, James yeah. and Dory, but yeah, it was, yeah, that was my biggest criticism. All right, so is there any other things you're playing besides Five or Sixteen? Um, yeah, there's there, there's been a couple. Like uh, right before the year, the the year ended, um, I managed to platinum Assassin's Creed Mirage. Like I just. I just put in a good, you know, I think, oh, I, I think, so the, it took me about 19 hours to beat the game, and that was, like, mostly just 
beelining for the story. Like, you know, I picked up a few chests and collectibles and whatnot along the way, but yeah, it took me about 19 hours to beat the story, which I was plenty happy with. Like, the story wasn't anything amazing. I'm, I'm not sure if you've played it, Seb, but it was fine. Um, I played it, but I, I actually then... I haven't touched it since we talked about it, actually. Okay, okay. So, so you haven't... Have you beaten it? No, actually, I haven't touched it since we talked about it. Like, I really haven't yeah. touched it in, like, two months. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I regret okay. buying it because I, I bought it, like, when I was too yeah. busy with other things to do, and I was like, I don't know yes. why. Like, no, that's what I plan I, on I, doing I bought... this year. I don't, I'm not doing the FOMO yeah. thing this year. Go, sorry, yeah. go, Dory. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I, I honestly thought that was a bad purchase. Like, when I heard about it, how short it was, and, I mean, you know me, I'm not a big fan of Ubisoft anyway. Um, but I was just like, this just doesn't seem like a good use of my time. Maybe on a sale, but even then, it's, it's, it's a. I mean, even even at its already discounted price, I still wouldn't say it's worth. It's like twenty dollars. Like, the full right? launch price. It was at. Uh, I it was like it was like fifty dollars. No, I mean say. like it's worth like now like I would wait for oh, it to yes. be like twenty bucks. Yes. Yeah, I, I'd say like yeah, twenty I mean, to thirty bucks depending on how big of a fan you are of of the Assassin's Creed sort of franchise and and of the yeah. older games. And how much um, you're longing for that old school style? Yeah, because like, like I mean, like I'm, yeah. I'm more than happy to say that this is probably my favorite Assassin's Creed game, hands down. Like it's, it's nowhere ever? near as. You mean ever or I like mean, since since the I, game? I, I, I want to say ever, but like I'll put a heavy asterisk there in saying that I have like I've played like assassin's creed 2 and assassin's creed 3 i haven't beaten them just because i kind of fell off with either the story or how those games controlled um and i i just wasn't a fan of back black flag i think that's probably like my hottest take of the wow. franchise that i just i just i didn't think like yeah black flag black is flag. one of the best i think i think two is my favorite know, but black flag is like arguably the best i one. just I just couldn't vibe with the pirate theme. Like, I, mm. it's they it just thoroughly disinterest me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, pirates, no. <laughs> I I was really into it. That's um, why I was so hyped for Skull and Bones, and now I'm now I have zero hype for that game. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't think it, yeah, I don't think anyone knows it's even coming out. But but yeah, so like that's that to put it in perspective. Like yeah, but um, I like I wasn't as like I still like you know I still found enjoyment in Black Flag, but like you know I wasn't head up head over heels for it i really liked assassin's creed unity i mean that like to be fair that's the game that kind of got me into the franchise because i just like play through those um big like assassination missions with my cousin whenever i'd go over and we just i've just got so many fond memories of you know just us just constantly being shit at it and just dying all the time and, like you know restarting it over and over again and trying to figure out the best way to assassinate the target um yeah and then what syndicate after that i was like you know i was like i i think i laid with most people i was like you know it, it's still good but it's not as great as you know unity or, or anything that came before right and now um you also platinum robocop so i i did how did you find I did. that game um i was about to say fantastic it was really good <laughs> it was really good it's one of the most underrated um, games of the year I, for sure oh 100 percent, 100 percent. like i I haven't even, you know, there's, like, still, like, large or, like, big games from last year that, like, I'm missing or just haven't played, and, and even then, I'm just like, yeah, this is probably the most underrated game of last year. Like, I, similarly to when um, the studio's, like, last game, like, Terminator Resistance, I think it is similar to when that was coming out, I, I saw the trailers for it, and I'm like, oh, it's the guys who made that, you know, that shit, like, Rambo game, where it was, like, on rails or whatever. Yep. So, like, you know, I, I don't that. really have much expectation for this, and then, and, uh, and, like, I haven't, well, up until the point of playing it, um, I hadn't really watched any of the original Robocop movies anyways, like, I was familiar with them, but mm. I, I hadn't, you know, I didn't have that nostalgia or reverence for the, for the IP, um... Because cause that's really what their studio is. It's just, it's just like, you know, people who... It, I mean, and I, and I don't sound this to say this to sound cynical either, but it's like the studio that basically takes all these, like, 80s beloved IPs and nostalgia franchises and they're like, yeah, let's let's make a video game out of them. And what, good honestly, ones, though. Good ones. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's like I, I was really underestimating them just because of their budget and, again, because of that Rambo game. But, yeah, I was surprised at how good this was. I'd, it's, like, it, it's basically just Fallout with Robocop, 
is is the best way I can explain it. Like it's it's so similar to the way that um you know it's like just the way that every like the UI and HUD is designed. Um, down to the fact that, you know, you've got, like, all these side quests that, you you know, you can constantly make choices on to an extent, to an extent, like, it's still, you know, A to B. Um, you, there's, what you call it, um, there's just a, a shit ton of collectibles, and you can just walk around, and, like, you know, you create all these, like, relationships with just random pedestrians and stuff you come across, um, and yeah it's i mean oh and and also they they include the best you know, most you know um most recognizable aspect of fallout games is that they retain the shitty facial animations i mean it's it's i i wasn't expecting them to you know pay so much tribute to bethesda to bethesda as they did but you know bravo to nikon or, or whatever the hell the studio's name is yeah the um, um that like I, I i grew up with the robocop movies uh, i mean they're classics yes. the first two well uh the first I, one especially I, don't watch the third one third one's yes. terrible but uh <laughs> i've heard i've heard and the remake's um, even I've, worse i all right remakes okay, I, I guess yeah. yeah i mean like i i watched the remake when it around the time when it came out and I, I liked it enough but obviously i didn't have the perspective of the original movie i i made sure to watch the first movie before i play the game um not knowing that this actually takes place between two and three but but whatever um mm -hmm. i yeah like I, I really liked the first movie and it, it at least like allowed me to you know when they had all the flashbacks and callbacks to sort of the original movie i was like i i, I recognize that i you know I, I understood that reference um but yeah i was i was surprised at just how good the game was peter weller I mean, he still voices Robocop. I'm, I can't exactly say that he put in an amazing performance, but at the same time, he's voicing Robocop. I don't exactly know how emotional he can get. Or he, he he's, get. He, he's not that emotional. Yeah. Well, he yeah, reta well, he retains his humanity, but he's still very uh, very Ro robotic, robotic. In yeah. a way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because so, like, there were times where it's like, oh, that line read didn't sound good, but at the same time... You know, it's like in context, he's Robocop, so like it, it kind of makes sense. You know, like like that's kind of the vibe I got from a lot of his performance in this game. It's like it, it's like half the time it sounded thor he sounded thoroughly disinterested, but at the same time, it's like well, you know, is, is there a reason for that? Well, plus, he's old. I mean, um, he's in his seventies yeah, or eighties or something. He's gonna be in his seventies at least. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, what else? One, if, if I had to, like, before we move on, if I had to have, like, one criticism with the game, it's probably the fact that the game, like, you could easily just shorten, like, one to two hours off of the game, and even then, like, it's still not very long. Like, it took me 12 hours to completely platinum it, which... Yeah. It's it's an easy plat as well. It is, it yeah. is easy. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's like you... Yeah, you just, um, like, there are probably about, like, two or three moments where I was like, okay, the game's gonna end here, it's gonna roll credits, and then it just kept going, and going, and going, and going, and I'm like, okay, fine. Yeah, I mean, the I overall, know. overall, like, the game, the game is dead accurate, um, to the movies, 100%. Terminator oh, Resistance yeah. was too, and then, um, uh, I thought, it's unique, because it's like, it's you know on typical shooters we're always running around and dodge and like jumping yes. or, or you know st like staying low to the ground or hiding in a corner like yeah. he's a full-on just tank and you walk slow and just shoot mm. people like you don't there's no crouch the, button there's no no uh, anything like no jumping you just straight up walk around and shoot yeah and the, the funny thing about it though is that like with just like you know that the, i think they got the speed just perfect you know because like there was never really any moment where i'm like oh you know like i wish i could go faster than this or you know because like none of the environments are all that big like even when you're exploring like the detroit city area i yeah. can't robocop be more like sonic it's yeah <laughs> but it, but it's like you know it's like you it's it's not big it, like it's big enough to like have a lot of detail and you know have a lot of things you can discover and explore but it's it's not big enough to the point where it's like you know half the time you just think you yeah know, you're just kind of going oh god i wish you know you could go faster or i wish like you know it, it's it's not that bad at all 
Yeah, th- um, there's a slight level of like cheapness to it. Like you can tell it's not a triple A oh, game. Like, 100%. It still looks good over most for the most part, but it's still yeah. like something is there where you can tell it's not Naughty Dog or or I, like I, Santa, Santa mainly, Monica or something. Yeah, it's it's mainly I mean like the the models on their own look fine. It's just like the facial animations and the lip sync that close. kind of pulls yeah. you away from it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like Robocop yeah. looks like perfect. And I mean this is Unreal Engine five i want to say or is it still four I'm not sure um i want to say unreal engine five but let me confirm that yep developed using unreal engine five yeah nice yeah, it is. Now, is it, did you did you um, play anything else or um i on? yeah so i um I, I was gonna say like i got into elden ring for a bit sort of you know for a, probably oh, just under a month back um, I've been playing I, that again I, too, yeah. on Steam. Yeah, I've now after I beat Bloodborne a while back, like I got back into Elden Ring and like I'm I'm starting to actually make some proper progress there and not just stall constantly for hours at a time. Um, and then I a couple days ago I also put a few hours into Wolfenstein too. So I've I've had that on my backlog for a while. So I'm just gonna try and finish it off as quick as possible. It's not a long um, game. And it's. But no, it's, it, it, it is, well, it's kind of challenging though. Like I had to play, I had to play it on easy mode. I could not, for some reason, normal mode was too hard for me. Like I just couldn't do it. I, I think the hardest roadblock I got to was um, like the courthouse thing, where like it, it ended up being a daydream. But like, there's a bit where you're in a courthouse and like there's just a bunch of enemies that kind of spawn in, and I mean like the the game does kind of compel you to like you know run out of the room and whatnot, but there's a moment before the doors actually open where you just kind of have to, you know, find a good spot to take cover in and, and hope to God that you don't get shot out of nowhere. And and I, th- I think the thing that... Because I found with the first game that, like, stealth was a really viable option, but I don't know why, just in the second game, I I just find stealth to be... Well, not useless, but, like, I'll, you know, it's, it's just not as viable as it felt in the first game. Like, I'm... I'm constantly getting spotted by enemies that I just can't see at all. Um, you know, it's like there's no real way for me to peek around corners without, like, you know, if an enemy's facing the same direction, then you, you're screwed. You know, it, it's like there's just... I don't know what it is. It just doesn't feel as well designed as the first game for stealth. Mm. Um, and other game I've been playing um, is that I've, I've recently just restarted God of War 2018 on Gimme God of War difficulty, which... I will say is not as hard as I was expecting. Like it, it's still, you know, brutally difficult in moments, but it's it's nowhere near as bad as I was expecting. Mm. So I'm, God, God help me. I think I'm gonna try and go for the platinum on this difficulty. God Oof. help me. But, God but that's, or that, help you. <laughs> but that's that that's something I'll be working on, like you know, in the background over the next year. I'd say, like uh, you know, I'll probably get a bit done here and there, and then I'll just come back to it on occasion. Now, bef- just work way at it. before we move on to Dory, um, do you plan on playing more new games this year, or you, st- you can st- you think you're still gonna uh, I'm... play play the older backlog games again? No, this is just more of I a backlog year anyway. But yeah, yeah, I I think this is gonna be a backlog year again. Like it's, okay. I I've been I've there have been multiple times over the you know Christmas New Year's period where like I've had to like actively resist buying new games or like you know games that are on sale it's like oh you know um remnant 2 is on sale for such such and such oh i could buy that or oh you know do i want to buy actually um... i'll say i would say save that for the next topic because that's what we're going to talk about one of our topics is going to be yes games you want to play that you didn't get to play last year yes so we'll talk about that true true all right yeah so, so let uh, so dory you've been waiting patiently enough um <laughs> yes yes i don't mind uh, what, what did you get for Christmas, and then what have you been playing? So I uh, posted a photo of myself, I think, on a couple of Discords, and maybe my Facebook. Um, but yeah, I, I got a lot of Steam gift cards. I probably, arguably, got too many, to the point that I thought considered buying a Steam deck, but ultimately didn't. Um, I think I got $165 worth of Steam money, uh, which is just wild. I've never had that much money in my wallet. And I got so many flipping games i don't even know how many games actually i do it was like 15 18 um a lot of them indies that's how I was you don't you don't even like want to know how, you only want want to know how many yeah. games i bought in that winter so 
wish wish list yeah winter sales brutal uh brutally good um but yes. uh my wish list it w- like didn't go above twenty dollars um so they were all pretty cheap buys but um you know some highlights include uh divinity original sin one and two um i also bought um uh some detective games that i've been eyeing for a while um i bought uh the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood, Eternites, uh, and uh, We Are OFK, plus a few other indies like My Friendly Neighborhood. Um, so, yeah, and Harmony, The Fall of Reverie, uh, which came out in 2023. Um, so, yeah, I just bought a lot of shit, um, basically, and I've got a bigger backlog now, too. Um, but, yeah, um, and then besides that, I got a really pretty, like, EV Lucian dress, uh, which I love. I kind of need to exercise a little bit it does fit but it's a little tight on me so mm. um because of the holidays um so i'll i'll work that off and then i'll probably wear i'm it, italian i understand yeah, yeah. Uh, we, and i had an italian dinner for 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 uh christmas so that was good mm-hmm. um but yeah got lots of lots of candy from my uh, uh uh from just everybody really but especially my partner's mom uh and so uh yeah, um, that was pretty much it. I mean, I got I had a really good uh, Christmas in terms of the stuff I got. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it went. Oh, and I also got this uh, uh, this little um, fitness watch. It's not it's a it's a semi smart watch. Uh, it's it, it can't like respond to, to messages or notifications, but I can get them, uh, and mm-hmm. I can make calls, and I can uh, check my heart rate and. Like right now, it's eighty nine, um, and then I've got like o- almost six thousand steps in today. Nice. Um, so that was pretty cool. I got that from um, uh, Kim's mom, so that was nice. What, what if, what if you were just gonna say it's like, oh yeah, what's my heart right now? Oh okay, you know, one fifty. Yeah, yeah. So you know, anyways, moving on. <laughs> yeah, just normal. <laughs> yeah, you know, just just resting at one fifty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Easy, Call nine one one. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Call nine one one. I'm on the floor right now and I'm dying, but we're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, wh- what games do you want to highlight now? Um, like. Uh, yeah. So I played a bunch of games over the break. I'm gonna try to highlight the ones that I really liked, because uh, I don't want to be too negative. Um, most of the one, most of them I liked. Um, but I'll I'll highlight three that I really liked. Um, so Slay the Princess is a game that I learned from Brian of Draft Punk. So shout out to Brian. Um, this is such an uh, up my alley game that I'm surprised I didn't know about it prior. But basically, your whole mission is to kill a princess. Uh, and it's a black and white kind of visual no- novel style. Very meta. Think uh, Beginner's Guide or Stanley Parable. But with uh, a lot more <sighs> cosmic philosophical themes um you know you kind of question like why am i killing this princess she's supposedly bringing the end of the world but that seems kind of sus and the narrator seems a bit very invested in what's going on so of course there's a whole big deeper conspiracy going on here which you eventually find out about um it's not a very long game i think i beat it in three hours four hours it's not a long game at all um but it's a good game it's a damn good game did you beat it this year um yes uh well i beat it last year uh over the break Hmm. Um, I've only beaten one game this year, uh, which was Wayward Strand. Hmm. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I beat Slay the Princess. Um, it, it has a lot of really cool themes about life and death and morality and choices and, um, just a lot of, like, really interesting dialogue. I will say the only, like, downer about the game is that there's not a lot of voice actors. Like, there's only two, one for the narrator and one for the voices inside your head, which is the same guy. And then the princess has one, um, and the you know they they both do solid jobs, but it does at certain points it does take you a little bit out of it because the narrator has the same voice as some of the voices in your head, so you're like it's kind of weird. I don't know, but um, very meta, uh, very cool, um, lots of twists, lots of twists and turns. Uh, I think there's like four major endings, different endings you can get, um, so that's fun too. Uh, just a really tight, well written game. It doesn't overstay its welcome. Um, the game is not picky about which ending you get so you can get the true ending. Um, you know, and honestly, if you don't care about the true ending, you can beat this in like an hour. Um, but yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun. Really messed up game, by the way. Really messed up. So, actually, uh, you know, I, I don't know I, if you're... 
It's actually one of the highest yeah. rated games of the year. Got a ninety on Metacritic. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a it's a really great game. It's kind of surprising um, there wasn't hasn't been in this big indie conversation, right? Like I haven't really heard about this game until you mentioned it. Yeah, like, I hadn't here. either. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, Brian, kudos to Brian for the for the pickup there. Um, for the shout out there. Um, yeah, great, really great game. Highly recommend. Um, I don't know if it should be at that ninety. But for me, it's it's a very good game, and I think it deserves more more recognition. If you enjoy visual novels with very philosophical elements that aren't afraid to get messed up, um, then this is the game for you. And it was and when I bought it, pretty cheap. I think it was less than, less than ten bucks for sure. Um, I don't remember exactly how much it was, but yeah, uh, it was a good deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also bought uh, Tales: The Backbone Preludes. Um, you guys may have remembered that I played this game called uh, uh, t- the, the Backbone or whatever. I forget what the original is called. But it's basically you're playing an anthropomorphic raccoon. You're a detective. Uh, and oh, I do remember that. And you are in like, this kind of, yes, this kind of j- noir, jazzy thing. And when I talked about it, I said, oh, this was really good. The writing's really strong. The voice acting's strong. The music, the sound, the blah, blah, blah. But the ending is such a out-of-the-nowhere downer that isn't very well explained and kind of just comes out of nowhere uh, and that's a big criticism with the first game um this doesn't really fix that issue but it tries to like address it a little bit um basically what you're doing is you're playing four different characters who show up in backbone before backbone happened um and it's so uh, you know it's a prelude it's a prequel um and you make certain choices that affect them in that timeline uh it doesn't obviously it doesn't really affect them where they go in the next game but it gives you an insight of like, oh, that's why this character is like this in this other game. Um, once again, really strong character work, really strong writing work. The game's only like three hours long. I beat it in one night, um, and it was really good, uh, really strong. It, it did kind of stink because I had, um, I had played, hadn't played uh, Backbone in quite a while, um, the original. So some of the story threads that they're pulling on very effectively don't hit as hard for me because it kind of took me a while to remember what these who these characters were in the base game uh, or in the first game. Um, so, so um, but very well written. And yeah, I mean, um, it's another game where the characters are very well realized and just very likable. Like, I only spent a short amount of time with these characters but by the end of it i'm like yes like i really got to know them i i like them um you can get certain traits too throughout the game so you can be sarcastic or you can be analytical or you can be this or that i will say too uh towards the end of the game with one of the stories was one of the most tense um experiences in a video game i've ever had which is where you're basically like I won't go into too much detail, but basically you are uh, very out much outclassed in, in, in this situation. Um, and um, you are basically negotiating so that you don't die. But it's kind of all like smiles and stuff like that. It's very like, let's pretend like we're not in a life or death situation. Uh, it was it was so well written and so well done that I was like, I, I really didn't want these characters who I'd gotten to know um, and you switch between characters, so they're not the only characters. But I had gotten to know these characters well enough that I really didn't want them to die. Uh, and it's just such a cool, interesting challenge to talk your way out of a fight, basically. Um, because the, the game doesn't have any combat. It's all story-based. Um, but yeah, it was really fun. Uh, and I'm glad they made this game. Um, it doesn't necessarily fix like what was wrong with the first game. But it was more from that universe. And if you really want more from... Uh, uh, Tales the Backbone um, then obviously this is a game you should get uh, if you didn't like the first game probably shouldn't get this um, but it was fun it was fun switching between those characters and uh, the environments are gorgeous the um, noir inspired music is really good as always um, last game I'll talk about is uh, not really a game it's a DLC uh, it's the Valhalla DLC um, from God of War Um this was yes. a lot of fun. I don't usually like roguelikes, um, but, you know, obvious Hades ex- exception aside. Um, so I was nervous about this and whether I'd like it or not, but I had an absolute blast. 
Uh, the only thing I didn't have a blast with was the final rendition of of the final boss, where he has like a, a get the fuck out sword and just absolutely tears. <laughs> yeah, that was threads. that was challenging. How how yes, many that was, how, that, how many hours yeah. did it actually take you to take you guys to to reach that final boss? So how how many deaths if you can recount? I died well, I maybe two you. times, three times. I didn't die oh, a like lot. Just to the I, final boss, or like like overall the, the whole thing. Like yeah, nah, I like mean before the game resets well, you, because the game resets you at certain points, and then it, of course if you I, die, I, I'm, I'm not counting that. Five times. I I want to say it's it's gonna be three to five. It's been a while. Mm. And most of them were him. Most of them were him. Most yeah, of them were uh, the most of the deaths I, I yeah. got were the last for the final boss. Yeah, I didn't die at all until the final no. boss. Um, but yeah, I mean I, the, the main thing I I want to get. It, oh, go ahead, Mitch. No, sorry. I, I was just gonna say, yeah. Um, I, I I didn't do as well as you guys. Then I, I died like yeah. quite a few times. But but it meant that by the time I did reach the final iteration of tier, I'd like you know sunk enough resources and upgrades into like you know better upgrading my health capacity and, and yeah, whatnot. I, relatively, I I found tier's final fight not to be too bad like I, I still think i died a couple times to him at least once or twice but like i didn't find it as bad just because i died so many times when before it, i was able to yeah sync upgrades into i was other stuff. i think by the time i beat him i was so stacked up and i i realized the sword build the uh when he, the olympic the olympian uh, sword yeah, olympian yes i yep. i beat him easily when i did when i did beat him i didn't actually i was like i why did i, I struggle with this that much no, I realized yeah, that when I, I, either. Went, when I, I beat him, it was kind of clunky. Yeah, when I beat him, I was actually yeah, in green yeah. health. Like I, thought, I was like, why was I struggling with this boss? Because like when I actually did beat him, it was actually like yes. I barely lost any health at all. I was like, wow, why did I struggle the, with this? The I was gonna say like as yeah, like almost almost clunky as the the blade of Olympus is. It is incredibly it's very cool. Like how how long you can keep it active and, and yeah, you know, like that's why that it's incredibly overpowered. That's why I made the boss fight easy because the hardest part of that fight wasn't the, wasn't him. It was the centaur that gets summoned in the middle yes, of the fight. Yes, I was about to say that. Yeah. So the, it, was, it wasn't yeah because yeah. the sword was the so long. Was tough. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, the duration of the sword move special was so long that like I could like take out all the add-ons like the add extra enemies. Yeah. And then, and, yeah. and with in the entire time, I had the sword out, so that really came in handy. Because yeah. his his 100%. that fight was way easier when the centaur wasn't part of the equation. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Um, yeah. But yeah, I I loved this right. DLC. Um, I had a great time with it. I mean, I did. I basically just finished the story and then I put it down because um, I didn't feel motivated past when the story ended. Um, there mm. are challenges and stuff you can tick off. Um, and, but I didn't really care about them. It was cool, but whatever. Um, mm. The combat's still fantastic. Um, the voice acting's still incredible. Um, the way that they bring in those classic God of Wars into this DLC is phenomenal. The fact that this is free is unbelievable. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've never seen a studio give such a quality product for free that is like, you know... Uh, AAA studio or whatever that Sony owns. Like, I've never seen that before. Um, so that's awesome of Santa Monica. Um, yeah, I mean, it was really great. Uh, I had an awesome time with it. it. What I found was easiest was the spear, just because you could do it from afar. Um, and so that gave me some amount of kind of safety, kind of like a safety blanket hmm. in terms of being able to keep my distance while still being able to hit. Um, but yeah, I mean, just the callbacks to previous iterations of Kratos, um, the Helios um, talking to you, the Helios stuff was really good. That was funny. Um, being able to fight on the Hydra's boat was really fun. Yeah. Um, yep. That was so cool. Um, just uh, getting to fight classic enemies uh, like the Minotaur and stuff like that was really cool. Uh, it was oh. just awesome. And the uh, sorry, I just I I just put two and two together. Yeah, that's the. That's the um, the the boat from the first game, of course. Yes. Of course, yep. it makes sense yep. now. I I never put that together before. Somehow. Yeah, he talk, he talks about the guy that died on the boat. Yeah, I, I love I, how I, much he I just fucking never belabors. Put two and two together. Yeah, because yeah. oh. that guy gets shit on in the first two games. <laughs> first game, I forget. I, to be Definitely fair, definitely the first game. I forget yeah. about the second. To be fair, I beat the first yeah. game like eight times with my friends like it's all we like when it, for, that game came out we played yeah. that game so much so yeah, yeah i only beat the first i only beat the first game once and it was when it came out and then i think i 
I got to the early part of God of War 2 when you start losing your powers, and then I don't think I got much past that, and I never played 3. Yeah, so this, some of these references are kind of uh, lost yeah. on me. For some, I, yeah. I never, for some reason in 2005, really my friends and I played Resident Evil 4 and God of War a lot for some reason. Like, just the two games, single-player yeah. games we played a lot, and Devil May Cry. Yeah. I don't know why. I that's mean, what we played good choices but yeah yeah we, we just choices. like i don't know why we play the same game like seven times you I'm can't saying. go wrong with them yeah. So. yeah but um yeah so is that everything dory before we move on uh yeah i i did play a couple other games to the moon which i didn't really like um I, it was okay but i found one of the protagonists like uh fucking insufferable um came out in 2012 and pop culture reference jokes i guess were still funny uh, it does have some like nice messages and nice pixel art, and the soundtrack is great. But I thought this game was overrated. I'm like one of the very few people on Steam who I guess didn't like it. Um, but that's fine. Um, it's okay. It's not bad, but it's just eh, not that great. I did try Trepang 2, um, which was uh, yeah. a, a kind of an indie shooter. Um, I, I dropped. I, I put it down for a bit. Um, I like it but i feel like it's repetitive for me um but at the same time when i do play it and i get into it it does get my adrenaline going which usually is the like the point of a good shooter so i feel torn like it's not a bad game and i think it's actually a good game but i i just felt like i was getting kind of um uh it was it felt like it was getting repetitive i also don't really think i uh, you know i know I, I don't don't really expect the story to be amazing or whatever but, I mean, I just, the story's just kind of there, and I just didn't feel any reason to keep going. After I played a few levels, I was like, okay, I get the point of this game, and I unlocked dual wielding, which is, like, very in- inaccurate, at least in my experience, and mm-hmm. I just felt underwhelmed with a, an ability mm-hmm. that I was really hyped for, because I love dual wielding. I mean, when you got to dual wield in Halo 2, that was, like, that was a moment for me. That was, like, that was, like, a core memory for me, uh, a canon event, if you will. Um, when I when I experienced dual wielding in Halo 2 for the first time, I was like, "Holy shit! What if one gun, but another gun also?" <laughs> so um, yeah, I love dual wielding a lot. Unfortunately, in this game, at least in my experience, um, it's it's a lot. It's very inaccurate. That's kind of the trade off, which sucks. I think that's why a lot of games um, don't use dual wielding. If you think about it, a lot of shooters, don't yeah. use dual wielding. Yes, they don't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, those are some other games I played. Um, I'll mention, uh, I'll talk about some of the games during honorable mentions. All right. So, um, so for me, well, this was, it was a long month. I, I I hurt my finger and, uh, I I thought I had to get surgery and I didn't need it. Uh, but my fingers, but they can't be fixed. So I'm stuck with two deformed fingers on the same hand. Uh, but I'm fine. It can't, it can't be because what last I heard it was fractured. Like oh uh, yeah, it yeah, it That's is right. fractured, but it healed improperly slightly on the on the tip. So uh, my for, okay. for, for forever, my finger is going to be a little slightly off for the rest of my life, and my pinky's bent forever too. But it's oh, fine. Jesus, dude. But um, I didn't need surgery, which I was pr- happy about because that would have been like four or five thousand dollars. So I was happy with that. So it was a stressful. Like, it was, like, yeah, yeah. I have insurance and stuff too, but my insurance didn't uh, change yeah, until the first of January. So I had to like hopefully mm. drag it to the next week which it would happen anyway anyway the point is uh it was a rough uh winter break for me in the first half uh christmas was kind of rough for me but this week this week after new year's has been really chill and i got I, I really got to relax and yeah. unwind and stuff so that has been nice so um that's enough of my drama <laughs> um i like i said i switched to pc gaming and i got a steam deck old i didn't get it for christmas i i bought it because i was like you know what um I keep hearing all these great things about it, and I want an OLED screen because the Switch OLED is amazing. So I want a Steam Deck OLED, and yeah, it's incredible. Um, I won't go into depth about what I've been playing uh, because I've mainly been playing games we all are very familiar with. Uh, I, I bought a lot of games for Winter Break. I'm gonna have I have a big backlog, but I'm not looking at it as a backlog. I'm looking at it as I'm gonna play whatever I want at the time, like whatever I'm in the mood for. I'm gonna play it. Mm. I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna treat it like a checklist. Or it's like, oh, I have to get this, 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 this done. I want, like, I play like playing Last of Us. That's what I'm going to play. If I play, if I play like playing yeah. God of War. So I bought all the PlayStation games on Steam. So I have been playing Ratchet & Clank, Rift Apart, uh, Last of Us Part 1, God of War 2018. 
so on and so forth on PC and ultra settings and those games look amazing in ultra settings I bought every pretty much every big game that was on sale like Red Dead Redemption 2 Witcher 3 you know um, uh, God I'm for, now I'm blanking uh, Elden Ring all the you know pretty much every yes. Dead Space remake Resident Evil 4 remake I'm playing all those games again mm. this year because they're not they're not really that long um, obviously and I've been playing Hades uh, which we've talked about extensively on the podcast, um, especially Dory. Like, it was like six weeks in a row or seven weeks in a row. Um, <laughs> and I do it again, Seb. I would do it again. And Hades Two is coming out this year, probably. So, oh god, be, be prepared for that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I not, I, I never roll credits yet, but I'm getting there on Hades, and mm-hmm. I beat Spider Man 2018 um, on PC. The game looks absolutely amazing on PC. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, and what I got for Christmas? I didn't. I I didn't get like uh, games or anything. Like that. I mainly got like I'm, yeah. a big, I'm a big sneakerhead. If you can see behind me, I have a lot of pairs of shoes. Um, I got three pairs of shoes. I got a bunch of hoodies. I got jerseys. I'm a big sports fan, so I got a lot of hats, things like that. I got a lot of clothing that I wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't get any books or anything because I, I I'm all digital with that. So. Yeah, actually, so, I got a, a Spider Verse uh, Spider Man sweatshirt. I forgot to mention that. That was cool as hell. Oh, nice. nice! Very snug. All right, so that's pretty much it for me. I don't. I, I like I say I'm not gonna give impressions of games we all we're all familiar with. So I think we should yeah. move on. Um, and for the sake of time, so this this next topic is not going to be a long impression. It's, it's, but it's not gonna be a rapid fire either. But I'm gonna ask you guys questions about last year. And you're just gonna answer hmm. it. Now you can give it. You, you, I'm saying you don't have to just give me like a one word answer and then move on. Just, but you don't, we're just not gonna have a long conversation about each one. So the first thing I want to ask you was, well, let's actually start with something positive. Uh, yeah. What what was the most underrated game of the year of, of last year? The absolute most underrated um, game, like no, that you, I mean, like you that you played that you played. I'll I'll get started because we've already talked about it just yeah for me it's probably going to be robocop like again i haven't played a great deal of games from the last year like the main ones i have played uh you know like the big hitters because there are a lot of big hitters um but yeah robocop rogue city definitely up there oh um i i do also want to give a quick shout out to dead island 2 like like it it received a fair amount of praise and it was successful so it's not as underrated as robocop is but I do just think that, you know, like, for all the crap that it went through in development hell and everything, I, I think it's, again, it, I just can't express how fantastic it is to see it actually, not only just to see it actually come out, but to see it come out as a properly finished game with, like, you know, no big day one patch, no laundry list of bugs or crashes or anything that needs fixing. Like, it's it, it's a game, it's finished, it's it's good to play from day one. Yeah, I agree with that. Dead Island Two, to me, is the most. Under, I think both those games are my two picks for the most underrated game. Yeah, I would also argue for Octopath because Game Awards gave it zero respect, and that was one of the like that was a high eight level game um, of RPGs. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people loved it, and it gets absolutely zero respect from a lot of from a lot of people. Cause I guess it's because it's the two D turn based RPG. Uh, jrpg yeah. so that turns people off but yeah that game is very underrated what about you dory mm. um i'm a little torn here I, I have a few picks in mind um i'll try to be brief about it uh you know dordonia is one of my favorite games of 2023 and i don't think it got any fucking recognition I at, did all, at all just about yeah it deserved more respect. Uh, yeah. yeah so it definitely deserved more respect i agree about about y'all's picks too i think those are great picks i heard that um uh, Robocop was was underrated before, so I totally believe it. Um, uh, from people who play games and had played it and so forth. Uh, yeah, Dordogne is probably the most underrated. It didn't get anything at the Game Awards. I thought it was an incredibly touching story. Very accessible. Uh, very beautifully told. Um, beautifully drawn out. Uh, just on Game Pass, so very easily accessible. Um, so probably that, but... I'd also say a little bit more popular, but still highly underrated, Sea of Stars. I feel like Sea of Stars should have gotten more at the Game Awards. I know, I think it did get one award. It won Best Indie um, of the Year. It won Best Indie, so, you know, maybe not as underrated as Dordogne, but I still feel like it deserved more love. 
uh, than it got. I think it's underrated it's with the incredible with, game. I think it's underrated with the hardcore audience, like the hard like people, yeah. people a lot because a lot of people just get turned off by like you know, said two D, uh, right turn based RPG. Yeah, and the last and the last underrated game I'll say um, is probably Slay the Princess, which would have maybe been on my top ten if I had uh, if if we had. Uh, or not top ten would have been at least on my honorable mentions uh, if I had played it sooner. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I I already talked in detail about that. Um, I kind of feel like Atomic Heart got too much shit. And let me put on my my dumb dumb club hat here for a second. But I feel like Atomic Heart is slightly underrated and it didn't deserve as much hate as it got, even though it wasn't the writing was crap and the well, pro tag was let, crap. Let's use that. But as I a... still think the vision the vision was good. And it looked amazing, and it was for me. It was fun to play. Yeah. But I understand that the writing was crap. The pro tag was, was crap. And, mm. Yes. You know, so there's things that were not good about it. So let's use that as a segue as our most disappointing games of 2023, and mine would be Atomic Heart. Uh, Atomic Heart yeah. um, was very disappointing for me in the sense that like I, that the visuals were incredible, like that was the best part of the game. But everything else in that game was tedious, annoying dialogue was cringe horrendous like i couldn't even play it like i was so turned off by that game mm. i don't know how dory beat it personally mm. um but <laughs> respect um and enjoyed it <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't like that game at all i mean i didn't hate it like i i played way worse games than it it's like a very mediocre game like it's not horrible yeah but it's mediocre yeah. now i i also would say forespoken now i'm not now i didn't expect it to be good so, so I, it's not disappointing because i always expected to be mid yeah. at best I still mostly enjoyed it as like an average game. Like I thought the gameplay was fun, like traversal was fun, but the the cr- the dialogue was cringe and the, and the storyline was yeah. outside of the one twist in that game. It was really cool. The storyline was garbage, so I I was just so un- I, un- 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 uninterested in this game. I mean, it's it, it's like it's more disappointing the fact that it's like you know the potential for something really great or at least special was there, but they yes. just didn't reach it it was hyped to be the it. next big like sony oh, i mean sony didn't it's not a sony game per se but it, it was hyped to be the next big playstation like ip yeah the way they got yeah. got so much advertisement and didn't yeah. live up to that at all yeah Definitely. yeah uh mitch what uh, do you mitch you want to say yours first before i say mine yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I've I've got a couple. Um, big one that comes to mind is Jedi Survivor again, just for the way it launched. Um, like yeah. I know it's I yeah. know it's fine now, but it's like I, in all honesty, it's like just the way that it launched. Even though even though I got through it, just left such a bad taste in my mouth that like it, I th- I still think it's going to be a while before I actually get back to that game to like you know finish off the rest of the trophies which which is really sad because when i was playing through it all i could think about was oh my god this is so much better than the first game and and then it's like by the end that's where for me at least just a lot of the really bad you know frame rate issues and technical issues just started to rear their head and like it would you know what should have been like a triumphant like you know like rush to the finish line was like just more of a like you know just a slog and just like a, a crawl um for me so it, it like it really hurt um to to see it come out like that um other thing i'll just quickly mention is also mortal kombat 1 i, I agree like it's, it's not a bad game not a bad game by any means but like compared to mk11 it it just feels like a really watered down version it, of what we've had before and he, the fact yeah, that, and like yeah. like the fact you yeah, good and and the fact that um you know it's like they haven't exactly expressed much much you know interest or like you know shown any indication that they're going to be adding anything else in the future like you know no new kind of game modes or no new major innovations to like the invasions thing or anything like that's that's the real bummer to me because it's like i can live with this being like maybe a launch day thing and then they'll like add new features or stuff later on but it's like at this stage it just looks like they're just looking at implementing the the paid dlc roster which the fact that like the dlc costs like i think like 60 dollars australian is ridiculous like i'm I'm not yeah like i'm not paying 60 dollars for uh, those prices in australia are wild like you can't even buy a steam deck and and if you did buy a steam deck it's like 1200 dollars 
or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I, I, exactly. I think you guys are still a penal colony. Have you guys double checked if you're still a penal colony? Because that's wild. Dude. Oh, I know, I know. Um, and, and they don't, and, and, and they don't get all the streaming services and stuff too. They get left out. I know, like that's fucking. Wild. Oh, we we we've, we've we've never had HBO Max. We've never wow. had it. Ever like we we've got our own version, but it's like you know owned by Rupert Murdoch, and it's 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 just shit. It it's shit. It's but, like yeah. Let let's just scramble together the best streaming service we can, so we can hold on to all the HBO licenses we own. Um. Anyways, moving on quickly. One final thing I'll mention: Destiny Two Lightfall, the campaign that came out at the start of the year. It, the campaign itself wasn't terrible, but again, it's just like compared to the Witch Queen expansion that came out the year before it was just such a letdown that it honestly put me off playing destiny 2 for the rest of the year like i haven't picked the game up in like you know probably eight nine months at this point and i and and i bought this like the the annual pass so like i paid an extra like you know 30 to 50 dollars for seasonal content that i've just never played just because i was so just put off by the game so that's that's probably yeah why why it's land on the disappointing list for me. But other than that, other than that, twenty twenty three was a pretty great year. Yeah, uh, considered. Before Nori uh, goes, I just wanted to say Mortal Kombat was disappointed in the sense in comparison to Street Fighter. Uh, like Mortal Kombat was not yeah. a bad. It was just, it was like eight out of ten for me. Another one of those games I yeah. I, I regret buying day one. Yeah, it, it it felt like a like a a pretty big step back from mk11 with like you know how much customization it had and and you know the fact that you had that replayability of being able to choose which characters you selected in certain missions and yep. and even just the crypt being able to explore the crypt like it was a freaking dungeon crawler like that was that was awesome we didn't have that in this so like mm -hmm. i, I the, the the funny thing as well is that like what mk11 came out like 2019 and then they like did some more dlc for it in 2020 so like it, it's been like you know at least three years since the last Mortal Kombat came out before one came out and it's like where where did all the development time go you know it's like w w what happened all right <laughs> all right Dory your most disappointing yeah. games this is gonna hurt my soul to say um I looked over all my 2023 games um don't say Spider-Man 2 don't don't say it D don't don't uh, be like everyone dude, online dude shut, <laughs> shut up it's a five out of five <laughs> Those fucking yes. people are don't know what they're talking about. Can you imagine she's Baldur's yeah, Gate? I mean, she's Baldur's Gate, Spider Man. Like she's, the whole time, she was like, imagine she put a whole facade imagine. on. No. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, it's it, it's actually uh, uh, no wait. Let me let me get my let me get my top ten and just pick a random game from it. <laughs> um, it's actually a Resident Evil Four remake. No, yeah. um, it's AEW Fight Forever. It hurts my soul. Oh, that's a good one. Say. It's not it's not a bad game. I think it's actually a good game, uh, right between like okay and bad somewhere. Um, you know, I I love AW. I just went to uh, World's End in New York, uh, Long Island over the break. I forgot to mention that, but I went to New York over the break uh, to go see World's End. Huh. Unfortunately, one of the worst pay per views AW put on that year. Although the bar was very high because all their pay per views were excellent, this one just happened to be just good. I, thought, Which, yeah, it was still I, I was watching a lot of wrestling videos. I'm not, I'm not gonna go on a really quick tangent, but uh, people say AEW didn't have the greatest 2023. Like it was kind of, it wasn't. They didn't. They didn't. I still yeah. liked a lot of the stuff they put out, but there has been more sports I, entertainment ish stuff. Yeah, so. I just, I just think they, um, they're just, they're too young to have a video game. Like if like they, they should. They're, 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 I think they could have waited. Yeah, getting too many little yeah. hurdles right now. Like they should get, they should yeah, focus I, more I, on getting streaming service and yeah. that kind of stuff. TV. I think they're about to get a huge TV rights deal, and I honestly would have focused on the video game after that. But yeah, um, you know, it's 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 sad. I look. The good things are the move. The wrestling itself is really fun. You know, for a few days or something. If you have people, the friends to play with, it's even it's even more fun. Kim and I played a couple matches. Kicked her ass. Um. But um, I kicked her ass. Is what I said. She doesn't like play video um, games though, right? But, so I would hope so. But right? yeah, well, hey, whoa, 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 wait a second. We don't need to. We don't need to put facts in there like that. You're <laughs> making it sound less impressive now. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, Kim doesn't play a lot. Um, she loves Stardew Valley. That's her jam. Um, but yeah, um, wonky graphics. Uh, a very shallow story mode. Um, more news lately about the DLC being a lot of money for outdated characters that aren't even the gimmick that they are now 
like Tony Storm just came out and she's not even like the, in the Outcast anymore. Um, sorry, Miss Jackson, I am for real. Um, <laughs> but she's not even in the Outcast anymore. She's like timeless Tony Storm. So they don't even have her like actual gimmick. And I know it can be tough to like keep up with that, but it's just. I don't know. It, it's like pay, making people pay like 10, 12 bucks for one character who's not even up to date. I don't know. It just strikes me as a bad business move. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, this is not a bad or even much less a terrible game, but it was disappointing. I wanted it to be better than it was. Um, I would sooner say it was okay than it was great, which again hurts my soul. I'm a big AEW fan, but this release just didn't go how they wanted it to. Um, I don't mm -hmm. think that's a big deal for AEW as a company. I think they'll be fine. Tony Khan's a fucking multi-billionaire. Um, but uh, this this needs to be improved upon for the next release because um, I just feel like this wasn't this wasn't what they wanted. They wanted to kind of speak to those earlier years of you know uh, NWO versus WCW, you know WWF No Mercy. Uh, here comes the pain, like all those early you know. PS, PlayStation, Nintendo 64 games. I know Here Comes the Pain was PS2, but those kind of like earlier wrestling games. It's not a simulator. It's more like arcadey. Yeah. Yes, it's very, it's arcadey. It's not a simulator. People were like, oh my God, the graphics look terrible. Like they're not trying to simulate what the wrestlers actually look like. It's an arcade caricature of what you, somebody might look like. Do you in, think that was because they AW. want, do you think that's because of the budget? They wanted, that they had to be more yes. artistic? Or do you think? Uh, absolutely. I, I I think that was at least a contributing factor. I'm not sure if that was a deciding factor. But I also think even if they had a much bigger budget, like they want to differentiate themselves from WWE. You don't want to put out another simulator because even though it was a very different game from WWE uh, 2K, people were still making the comparison. Even though they're two completely different games trying completely different things, trying to do completely separate things uh, yeah. besides mm -hmm. wrestling, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, I mean, there's more blood. There's some match types that you would never see in a 2K game. Obviously, there's a big, there's a decent sized roster. Um, but this just fell flat for me. I played it for maybe a week or less. And after I went through the story mode once and I unlocked some wrestlers, I was kind of done. Uh, which, which says a lot. If I'm like an AEW super fan and even I wasn't like left majorly impressed by it mm -hmm. i can't really say anything else was my most disappointing game i knew redfall was gonna suck like we all knew that was gonna suck um so i can't say that um i can't say that uh let's see uh what i had one other game in mind that i'm not remembering it off the top of my what? head uh exo primal i knew was that exo primal was gonna uh, wasn't gonna be for me so that yeah i can't say that either i agree with that uh, it's, payday uh 3, i didn't expect it to be good payday yeah. 3 was uh, always uh like a risk for me so i'm not gonna say that either i want to so it's really only aw i want to say starfield as well no, no not because i think it's a bad I game i wanted to say starfield but i had low expectations I, so i don't know uh, as a big i'm a huge bethesda fan as we talked about and i've put so many yeah. hours into fallout and skyrim and oblivion and all so on and so forth and i, I it wasn't like i always make, i always feel like i'm saying it's a horrible game or anything it's it's like i put 60 hours into it i think it's a very solid eight a very good eight out of ten like it, it it was just it was so hyped to be like the next big bethesda ip yeah. like it was supposed to change the world and gaming forever like i know fanboys were hyping it up like that but i think it didn't live up to like skyrim because like that and fallout even Definitely fallout not. i think even fallout 4 is a better game than starfield and fallout 4 was kind of a disappointment in comparison to 3 in new vegas even though new vegas is not bethesda um but it it, it i starfield just it just felt like an outdated game with like a fresh like a nice coat of paint but even the coat of paint was dated in some parts so it just felt yeah. like it felt like bethesda it's time for bethesda to start shifting direction and trying something different uh but there probably won't yeah if i if i had to pick a second game it would be starfield but, but that would be unfair because i didn't have high expectations to begin with yeah but i didn't mention like i didn't mention it in my just most disappointing games and only because like it's it's very like i don't want to say it's disappointing it, it, it's just disappointing in the sense that it wasn't as good as like their previous games so it's not the 10 out of 10 that we that they were hyping it up to be it's more like a 7 or an 8 for me for yeah me. it was a, it was a good 8 out of 10 for me and like and, and that's, that's a really good score right but like in it just, i guess yeah. in comparison there were like so many games this year like it was like not even, it was like my fifth top 15 
And it's kind of crazy to think about that, like, like there's like 14 games yeah. better than it. But it's not even in my honorable mentions a- anymore. I think towards the end of the year, over the break, I played enough games that were better than Starfield that it's not even in my honorable mentions anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. All right, so let's talk about honorable mentions now. Um, so. Hey, segue. Yep. <laughs> Um, now we we're doing good on time, so we don't have to like rush through it. But we we can't we can't go on like twenty minute impressions of it either. Um, so mm-hmm. just try to keep it brief enough, like we did in the last topic. Um, so I'll, I'll start with mine. Um, my honorable mention, first of all, it would be Diablo Four. Uh, Diablo Four is one mm-hmm. of the games I put the most time into the, last year. Um, it was probably my. Th- I want to say second most played game of last year, the highest being Baldur's Gate. Um, I put maybe 70 to 80 hours in Diablo 4. Um, it was a really roller coaster year for that game because when I first played it, the campaign was amazing. Like the, I really enjoyed the story. It was really addicting. I couldn't put the game down. I was playing like six or seven hours a day in some days. Um, like that gameplay loop was addicting. It always is. Um, I, I was it was my friend's guild. We were hanging out. Everybody, it was a it was a really good time. And then they kind of ruined it with the season. We had to like start over, and a lot of people were yep. upset about that. And you know, Blizzard gets very greedy and things like all oh, so on and so forth. And I, 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 the game just totally dropped out of my. I was in my top three game for a while, and it full and it didn't even make my top ten. It just completely fell out of the top ten because of that. Um, mm. but it was always gonna be my honorable mentions that I definitely have to mention for sure. Um, I I recommend it. I rebought it on Steam. I'm gonna have it's a perfect Steam Deck uh, game because it's made for handhelds basically. So I'm going to have a lot of fun with that game again. Um, but but that doesn't mean I, there's definitely a lot of problems uh, with Blizzard's handling of it. But it's still a good game. It still holds up. It's still fun. So. Uh, my second would be Octopath Traveler 2. Uh, as I've talked about many times, the game has a gorgeous uh, music, gorgeous animation. It, 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 the scenery is incredible. Like the background, and like it, like even though it's a 2D game, the mix of 3D and 2D is really awesome. There's so many memorable moments and settings, and the characters are all likable. Like every single like so, uh, that was the problem with the first game. So I feel like they're very samey. The first, uh, all the characters' storylines and stuff. Why well, this game? Every character felt very unique in different storylines, and they all interconnected really well. Um, and it built up to. What a did you re- play it on? Did you play it on PC or PS5? Or I, I played it on PS5. In fact, was it, was it good? Did it control well? Oh, it was, yeah, perfect. I mean, it was turn-based RPG. Okay. It's very old school in that sense, so it's not like right, right. the controls are going to be anything totally different, but. Uh, it was my most played game on PS5 last year, actually. Uh, I put right. 60-something hours into it. Um, I, I, I can't. St- if you like turn-based R- JRPGs, this is the game to play. Like that was, that was one of the greatest games that I played last year. I, 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 I it, it was in my top ten, like literally ten minutes before we we did the video, and I changed it at the last minute because I was like, you know what, I have to shout out, um, Hi-Fi Rush and Liza P. Like I, I just I, I felt I just couldn't I couldn't leave out Hi-Fi Rush or Liza P, so it just didn't feel right to me. So I, I, that was the game I had to sacrifice. Uh, and my last uh, yeah. our, honorable mention would be Hogwarts Legacy. Controversy aside, the open world in that game was one of the best of the year. The details of the castle were insane. Like that game had so much detail. Mm. The combat was so much mm. fun. Um, and it, it, I'm playing it again on PC on ultra settings and that game is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. The character models are great. It, it, it just, I, 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 I don't even know how they run it on a switch and I would never play that game on a switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, it, it's funny you mentioned the open world cause like there's the, there's the castle and then there's everything around it. Yeah. And the hogs. It, it's, yeah. it's like, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, Hogsmeade is good as well, but it's like, then you just have all the forests and stuff, and it just... I, I think they could probably have done by, like, cutting, like, a solid... I'd, I'd say, like, 50% of, like, the greater open world outside of the castle. Like, you know, still do some forests and stuff, but as it is, it just feels 
way too bloated for its it own did, good. It did. I like I said. Um, it has problems. Like it. The reason why. I didn't, oh, yeah, yeah. The reason it didn't make my fun. top ten is because, as you said, the open world is as gorgeous as it is, and like there's a lot of detail mm. and stuff in it. The it, mm. you, like it is bloated. Like there's parts like they didn't need to be in there. Uh, like the castle yes. was very detailed, and then the rest of the game is like de- oh. just forest everywhere. Like, which makes yeah, sense because that's the location. Exactly. But at the same time, yeah. it's for for a game, you probably should have a little more unique locations. Um, and yeah, the enemy variety was the worst part of the game. Just, all you did, all you did in that game was fight spiders and wizards, dark wizards, mm-hmm. and that was it, and goblins, yeah. and that was it. Like, you, you, there's yes. no other enemy yeah. variety in that game. Even though the gameplay was really fun, like it was very Arkham like. Yeah. But it was. Yeah, surprisingly. Yeah. And the, and the spell, like you know, like it, it did it did uh, what Forspoken wanted to do. Like you can have like different yes. tabs of spells, and, and, and it flowed very well. Why well, like Forspoken was a, just a mess with mm-hmm. that. Uh, this game, yeah. the, you, you, the organization you can do like, oh, this section is just all the unlockable spells or the you know all the yes. key spells, and the, these ones are all the fire, and and you and the good and evil things you can do. Like you can learn, you can get all the dark wizard forbidden spells and Avada Kedavra, everybody, and like it, it, mm-hmm. it but, but but not not but but it always had a limit to it. Which I guess disappointed some people, yeah. but I didn't want to be a school shooter either. Um, <laughs> so, no. so it, it wasn't like that, but it was like it was just enough no, where, yeah. where it's like family, you know, it's dark enough, but but where it doesn't go too over the line. Um, mm. I thought it was a nice balance that. Mm. I yeah, I mean, like it, it, it's funny you mentioned for spoken because like yeah, I remember even like I mean like I, I I have come around on the game and and do like it, but it's. Yeah, it's just um, what you call just having to like you know every every few seconds like you know open up the radio menu and select the spell and then like change it from this and that. It gets not so much old, but but repetitive. Yeah, quite quickly. Now I, I think the big pro- um, the big problem with that game too was for a lot of people I think was I mean the big problem the game had besides the controversy stuff. I mean the game was the highest selling game of the year I think or the second highest after Call of Duty, but. It, a lot of people didn't. Yeah, beat, a lot of people didn't beat the game. A lot of they, they found out a lot of people didn't beat the game. Like is, a lot of people played it, but didn't. Which but dropped it. Yeah. Which is me. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I, I've had a. You know, I thought it was really good for like the first maybe five to ten hours, and then like I, I don't know. I got distracted by something else, and then I tried coming. I think that's what happened for I a lot just, of people. Like something came I out, and then people kind of get back into it. Yeah. Well, I mean, because like right after we had like what we had um, RE4 remake, and then. Like, just that March to April period, and then, like, you know, even into June with, like, Final Fantasy 16 and all that. Like, just a bunch of giant games came out right after. And it was just... Yeah. Yeah, and then just kind of going back to Hogwarts. Also, I think it's... I think in retrospect, like, after playing, like, other RPGs and stuff, it's just the fact that seeing... I don't know, like, like I, I appreciate what they were trying to do with the character creation system. And, like, you know, you can, like, all right... You've got your your character, and then you've got your voice, and you can choose how like high or low it is. But like it, it, it it's that um Watch Dogs Legion effect, where it's like it's it's very clear that it's like it's just like the the same two or three voice actors that have just been modulated to sound I agree. different. My th- yeah, that just yeah, sounds yeah, yeah, yeah. off. That was my thing. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was a fantastic first step. Like I like because you know yes, I'm a giant Harry yes. Potter fan. Every every Harry Potter fan, we've always wanted a game like where you can just go to school and like start from day one and just go to class and things like that like persona yeah, 5 yeah. kind of thing and this yeah, game was a yeah. great first step in that direction but it was still kind of limiting in the sense that like you make a character you kind of you stuck with two voices and like the hairstyles are very yeah. there's only like 15 hairstyles and like and n- none of them were mine it, none of them were mine and they had no curly hair i, I also yeah so, I, I also found it kind of i also found it kind of funny that like they had a dedicated spectacles or, like glasses yeah gear slot just because they, obviously because of the the ip and whatnot but i i don't know i, I just found that amusing that is like one of the like main collectible pieces of gear or loot you yeah. can find just different glasses and stuff yeah but um i'll wrap it up uh i yeah, did yeah. even though even though it be forced you in the year five I, I would have preferred we could start off in year one um i didn't care mm. for that but uh the side quests were really awesome i was really into the sebastian like storyline with like the dark wizard and like he's just mm. trying to help his sister and the slytherin thing like mm. that was really awesome and i love that like you can go in the houses like the details of like the common rooms were all amazing i was in ravenclaw i always will be in ravenclaw and like it was just a, a bl- mind-blowing how detailed it was mm. but 
and um what else and oh the, the clothing the customization of the clothing like you can do wear any like so many different unique styles like i was changing costumes mm. like all the time like it was like spider-man like it was insane was, how much um, you can customize and the br- what was it also the the room of requirement i think deserves I, a shout out that yes that was fun did, yeah because yeah. what the, i i mean i i remember like what i found like because for some reason i originally thought this avalanche was the guys who worked on just cause and whatnot but no it's it's the people who worked on like the disney infinity game yes and, like you know that's and, and and that was really where that that previous experience really shone through just because it's like i think even if they just made like their own solo game similar to unpacking where it's like you just get like this big open space and you get to customize it and and you know build it however you want it to be i think that even that would sell complete gang buses just like with the tech they have yes. available. This game, like yeah yeah sorry. yeah this game had no business being as good as it was like i i thought this game was going to be not live up to the hype because you know the people that made the disney infinity i was like I didn't expect him to make a quality horizon mm. kind of like, oh my god, like, wow. I thought it was going to be kind of like mm. a cash grab. You know, like, most Harry Potter games are kind of terrible, so they're all movie games. Yeah. Uh, I also had the Lego yeah. games, so I was like, I, my expectations were like, um, I mean, I was my, I was blown away by the trailers, but I was like, is it going to live up to it? And it did. Mm. It did. Now, like I said, there's I problems, think- but there's a there's an amazing first step. And like, this, like, a sequel can be way so much better like this is a very kind of like a uh i don't know i guess i guess i'm gonna say like forbidden west like improved on zero dawn kind of oh, kind of way i mean like, i I, I, I always go back i always go back to the um arkham asylum arkham city yeah example, that works too yeah like, you know, same yeah. wb too. i yeah oh yeah exactly um i think i don't know like for me like again i like when i first played this i was like i had a really high on my list and then I dropped it for a while, and then I came back to it, and then I was like, I, not not to completely discredit, but like at the same time, I was kind of like I came back to it for a few hours, and I was just kind of left thinking, what, what, what did I find so special about this game? You know, like mm. I like it, I don't know. It just like maybe like it, it's just maybe it was just that initial honeymoon period, and now that mm-hmm. was over. But it's like I came back to it, and like I gave it a, an honest try for a few hours. Yeah, it's like I just couldn't bring myself to finish it. And I was just like, yeah, where ironically I, enough where where did all the magic go you know like it, it just lost its appeal hmm. after I, separation which like doesn't happen with every single game either, yeah so i'm not yeah. sure not i sure didn't i didn't have that but i more. but i i think it fell out of my top 10 because uh like because I, when i look like for take off the harry potter like fandom aside like i feel like it was just mm. more memorable games like bigger moments yes. and things like that this game yeah obviously. was really good and like I, it's still like a nine out of ten for me, but there was just, e- e- even though I have like I, I even though I rate Hogwarts Legacy higher than like Jedi Survivor, I think Jedi Survivor just had bigger moments for me that like that just stand out mm. to me more like bigger story elements, better mem- more, more memorable characters and stuff like that. That's where this game fell flat yeah. for me. So, all right, let's move on yeah. uh, just for the sake of time. Obviously, I know we talked about I didn't yeah. I actually didn't prepare to talk about that game for that as long as we did, but we're still doing good in the time. <laughs> so Dory, what are your honorable mentions? I'm free. Um, let's see. My honorable mentions. I'm only going to mention two because I've already talked about uh, three of the other ones. Uh, okay. Sea of Stars, Tales Noir, and Slay the Princess. Um, but I will talk about uh, Stray Gods first. How to go again. We briefly uh, talked that, about it. When is that the musical we, one? It, yeah. Yes, that's the musical one. Yes. Um, yeah. That's my actually my number one honorable mention. Um, but uh, I'll start at the top. Um yeah, I mean, this is just such a lovely... I love the animation a lot. It's a graphic, uh, you know, visual novel, kind of like a graphic novel uh, type thing. Uh, there's some romance. I'm a sucker for drama with the gods. Um, there's lots of cool, like, themes about uh, suicide and about, um, uh, like, friendship and mortality and uh, letting go and grief and stuff like that. Um, so there's just a lot of good, like really good themes that the um, that the video game chooses to kind of dive into. Uh, the songs themselves are all really solid. Uh, unfortunately, none of them are like super memorable, which is the biggest problem with the game. I would mm. say I didn't find myself singing or humming any of them after I was done. 
uh, which is a problem for a music-based game. But they were all solid for what they were. I thought they were all mm. sung well. It wasn't the actor's problem. It was more of the writing. Yeah, the songs weren't. Um, were, but every the songs weren't like great, but they were they, they were they were fun enough. I think. Yeah. Yeah, they 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 served their purpose, and I enjoyed yeah. them a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, you had an all-star cast of um, uh, of geez. the usuals. What what. The usuals, basically. This could have been just called the usuals. I mean, you had Laura Bailey. You had... Uh, Troy Baker. What the fuck's his Ashley name? Troy George Baker, Cameron. thank you. Uh, Ashley Johnson's Troy in it. Baker. Yeah. This, this, I, Ashley, this, should, this the... should have just been called Troy Baker, and if you don't pay me, or if, you, if uh, I'm not going to show up unless you hire all my friends. Last of Us, the musical. Um, Troy Baker and Friends. Well, I mean, because like, didn't didn't have like all the cast of Critic... Didn't have all the cast of um, Critical Role in there yes, as well? Yes, it did. Like, Basically. Yes. Yep. So Last of Us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think Matthew Mercer wasn't in there, but other than him, uh, I think a lot of it was. I don't yeah. remember, though, for sure. But a lot of Critical Role uh, alums, too. I say alums, but Critical Role. Although it's not distracting. Like, you, don't, you don't really think no, about them. No, it's not. Yeah. They all do awesome jobs with the voice acting. I mean, we, we joke, but, I mean, it's the usual suspect for a goddamn reason. Like, it's very mm. good. Uh, my favorite is uh, Raul Coley's uh, Minotaur character, who's just an absolute joy um, to interact with, uh, who hmm. is just uh, a very clumsy, uh, dopey Minotaur who's desperately in love um, with this god, and it's just such a cute story. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought this was a really great story, honestly, bordering on excellent for me uh, at times. Um, I just thought it was written v very, very nice. Um, I'm a boring heterosexual in this one, so I went for Roy Baker's character. So you know, fucking put me out to the back and. Shoot Ironically, me whatever, I was. A, I did, went for the lesbian storyline. I know that is so funny. When we were comparing notes, I was like, "So Seb, what did you do?" Well, I went for this. Yeah, I, went, I was. Oh, that's I, went, cool. I went to Persephone. Where's that's her name? Right? Yeah, Persephone. Yeah, Persephone. Persephone. Um. So yeah, so lots of options with that and how you want to romance people. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I think more people should play. It was a really great game. Um, other game I want to highlight was Goodbye Volcano High. Um, I finally got around to playing this right before the year ended up. Um, I loved it a lot. Um, it had some problems with certain choices not meaning as much as you think they should. A perennial issue in choice-based games, of course. Always mm. an issue. Um, but that said, the characters were very well realized. The soundtrack kicked ass. Um, I loved the graphics. Um, you know, uh, controversies aside from this game, um, there were there was some controversies with the staff or something. I don't know. It was all and then 4chan got a hold of it. Yeah, so you know, that whole thing uh, happened. I, I was I was I was about to go like Twitter, but now I can go like 4chan. Yes, which is way worse <laughs> yeah. than Twitter. This game, it. this game, yeah, yeah this game Somehow. was barely talked about on Twitter. Like, I feel like yes. people kind of just forgot about it. Yeah. But how much it yeah. was? How much like I, I saw it being hyped up like years ago as well. That that surprises me. It, yeah, well, I think it just honestly faded away from the cycle because it kept coming up. It only it, it, it only got a lot of focus because yeah. it was on a PlayStation show that people didn't like, and it was like, this is what this is what they gave us this game. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, they fucking yeah. scapegoated. The, well, they fucking scapegoated them as if like it was their fucking fault. Or whatever. And then it got. Ryan yeah. Then I think it got delayed or something, and it, that. Yes, it got delayed. It was supposed to show last year or yeah. even the year before. That's why. So I guess other people forgot, um, forgot about. It. But it's not for everybody's game anyway. Yeah. This is only for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is again narrative audience. Narrative driven. Narrative driven visual novel. It's set in high school. You're all gonna die, so you might as well make the most of it. I thought this was, game was really cool. It surprised me. It wasn't just a game where you play music and you made choices. There was also a D and D campaign within the game i thought that was super cool uh and was a way to address certain friendships and relationships um and even though the ending i i will kind of give this away the ending is exactly what they market it like they don't do some cheap cop out um you know so it really does i mean the world really does end at the end of the game um so it's not it's not just some marketing ploy or some shit um they really just everybody dies um, but that's not important. The ride there is what matters, and you have really good friendships uh, with with a lot of the people, or or not. Um, the voice acting was is really good. I thought the writing was strong. Again, there are some times where I felt like your choices didn't mean super much, um, and I don't remember any other problems I had. It, it generally it didn't blow me away, 
but I had a I had a great to really great time with it, and I thought it was a really solid visual novel. If you've been waiting for this game to come out and weren't sure if it was any good, I recommend it. I think it's a great game. Um, I remember be I feel I felt like it was worth my time when I played it. Gotcha. And that's this all. Is that all your honorable mentions? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, again, I, I, I'll just give another shout out to Sea of Stars. Literally rejuvenated my interest in the turn-based RPG. Uh, I, I've talked about this a couple times, so I won't go on about it at length. But I will shout out Sea of Stars because uh, thanks to it, I you know have uh, other JRPGs and stuff like that. Um, I already like JRPGs, obviously, because I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan. But turn-based JRPGs is different. Um, and so uh, I am planning on playing more of those in the new year. Um, but I, before I do that, I want to get through some of my want to play list on Steam and the stuff I have on Game Pass and whatever. But yeah, Divinity Original Sin one and two maybe this year. Uh, mm. So we'll see. All right, mm. Mitch, what's your honorable mentions? Um, look, in all honesty, I I probably only have the one just because I've talked a bit. Like you know, I haven't really played many new games last year, at mm-hmm. least. Yeah. ones that are of note um so like of course robocop rogue city we've talked to death about that final fantasy 16 really into that um really at this point only other game that i'd probably shout out is funnily enough dory actually mentioned it earlier the uh, exo primal um <laughs> it's yeah of all things um it's it, it's not it, it look it's not the best thing around but like it is Far, far better than I actually ever expected it to be. Which, which even then, it was a pretty low bar that I had to clear to begin with, but it's still <laughs> it's still pretty good. Um, look, it's, it's great fun just to kind of hop in for a match or two every now and again and um like like i think it actually has a really good sense of progression like you're constantly leveling up um all of your exo suits and then you've got like the your levels and your battle passes and like they're like pretty much like you know well not most of yeah most of the cosmetics you can actually just earn by playing in game which is you know a rarity it feels like nowadays um and they give you just like so many cosmetic rewards for free for like you know like i think what i logged in around halloween time and christmas time they gave me just like a bunch of skins for literally all the exosuits with just like you know pumpkin heads or santa hats on top of them it's like like fun stuff like that um there is a story mode which i like you know the marketing wasn't exactly too clear on how the story would work but basically all it is is like you know you play a match and then seemingly at random you'll like you know pick up these like intel drops or whatever they call them so it so it unlocks um you know a new a a new like document for you to read through or like a new cutscene that you can watch and like they're they're fine like the story is interesting enough only problem is just that there's no manual like you know like skip to next line option like you have to just watch the characters like agonizingly talk through each and every single line and like even like even like to know like at the end of like you know while you're reading like one of those documents or like at the end of the cutscene, like it's just an agonizing like five to ten second minute like animation of like you know like your robot companion basically like you know she's like basically projecting like the screen out of her hands and then it's like the screen fades out and then it's like the robot like slowly puts her hands together and then she like walks away or something and it's like just let me skip this please for the love of god <laughs> um, imagine if you if you went through the same thing in a Hideo Kojima game oh god don't even <laughs> I would just end it I'd find the nearest bridge <laughs> <laughs> oh it's um but but yeah like but that's that's really all I have to say like it's yeah like yeah last year was a pretty good year most of the games that I wanted to play I played yeah and they most of the games I did play were all pretty good now, is it is it okay if I rapid fire a couple more? Because I have not, not I'm gonna go too detailed. Just just really quick. Um, cause yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because okay. I played a lot of new games last year. Um, uh, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, one of the best 2D Mario's ever. Uh, I I don't know why it it was really hard to leave it out of my top ten, but I did. Um, but one of the like just one of the best Switch games. If you have a Switch, definitely play that. Um, fantastic game. Um, Street Fighter VI, one of the greatest fighting games ever. The only reason it didn't make my top ten is because I, I'm not a big fighting game fan anymore, and I don't, I didn't put like 
hundreds of hours like people do on online and stuff like that i'm just not i've never been good at street fighter but objectively that was one of the greatest fighting games ever like the, there was so much content in that game uh and style uh they had a story mode it had an open world map kind of thing it was it was really cool you can make your own character you can tr- you can go up to the character and train in their school and learn their moves it was it, it had a lot of fun to it a lot of customization like there was so much content it makes mortal Kombat look even worse in comparison because next game was so content <laughs> content filled capcom just had comcon had an amazing year because you resident Evil 4 remake uh uh xo primal was decent as mitch mentioned and uh mm. and then street fighter 6 so they had an amazing year uh next year looks this year looks even better with uh dragon's dogma 2 coming out and apparently there's another un- unannounced game coming out in march for the capcom um uh what else uh, yeah metroid prime remastered uh metroid prime one of the greatest games ever made they remastered it just as good uh even even though it's like a nine point five, I I didn't I didn't I didn't rate it in my top ten because it's an older game that's remastered. I mean maybe it's a little unfair. Yeah. Um, put it in my top ten. I didn't want to leave anything out new for it. I, I, for Resident Evil Four remakes its own game, so I don't compare. I don't view that as the same way. Um, because it's built from the ground up. But yeah, Metroid yep. Prime, amazing amazing game. One of the best games on Switch. Uh, very old school back. You know, a lot of backtracking. Very. Uh, you, you probably need a guide to play it. Uh, very that was like back in the day where they didn't tell you anything they were just like good luck uh and then uh i'm not i promise i'm not dragging this out uh bramble bramble was one of the best indie games Uh, i literally loved bramble bramble was like a very awesome platformer with the very gory it was like limbo or inside you guys remember dory did impressions of that uh i played it out i got the platinum after that but i beat it twice uh, and yeah, it was a really good game. And uh, I, oh yeah, and last shout out it was Chia. Chia was one of the best. It won it won an award at the Game Awards. Yes, it, it, I it, think it was games that made a difference or something. It, I forgot. Something like that. Games, yeah, and it absolutely deserved it. Games that, for that game put that island on the map. Like people learned a lot about that culture. <laughs> it would, like, literally, yep. it was a lot of respect. Literally, put that island. And, it, it was such a love letter to those people and their culture and the music like that game was just like you can just get absorbed in the beautiful mu- uh, music it had one of the most gorgeous like s- like s- like uh uh animations and scenery and color palette like you can sail on the ocean and like the reflection of the sun and like with the pink sky is just absolutely gorgeous wow. like it, it was such a relaxing amazing experience um and don't sleep on that game it was like i said it was free on plus last year it's it's, it's pretty cheap now um if you like indie games and you're looking for something like that uh definitely recommend it and yeah that's hey i just want to i just want to shout out real quick three games i played in 2023 that aren't for 2023 but they kicked ass really quick and i am dragging this out i won't apologize uh (laughs) vampire survivors which fucking rules oh i'm playing that on steam deck amazing 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 i got addicted to that game so bad for like two or three days yeah y'all never saw me uh but it was incredible (laughs) uh titanfall 2 i finally played titanfall 2 Fucking incredible, ass. incredible that game. game. One of my favorite shooters of all time, and I randomly played it in 2023. Like that, that story mode is fucking incredible. And if, if, uh, and you have, and then, if you haven't played it yet, uh, it's like five dollars on Steam always. So get it. Yeah, it's a, it, it's such a steal it, for five dollars. That's just such a steal. Such a great game. So fun. Um, and then lastly, Yakuza Like a Dragon, which I finally got around to playing again, continuing my getting more into turn-based RPGs. Phenomenal game. Uh, uh, the difficulty spikes with some of the boss fights towards the end were ridiculous. But other than that, uh, it, it was an incredible game, and I loved it a lot. I'm very excited for Infinite Wealth. I don't know if, it'll de- if I'll buy it day one, but uh, depending on reviews, I might. So yeah. That's where I'm at. All right. So that wraps up our reflection of 2023. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about 2024. So we're going to make our predictions. We're going to like look, look at games we're looking forward to and all that stuff. So... This, this episode was all about looking backwards, and now we're going to look forwards. The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. Game of the Year. <laughs> that's great. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. They're going to they're gonna put out that's, The Last of Us 1.5. It's going to be, it's no, gonna yeah. be like Lion King 1.5, except like it's going to be like some, I don't know, like two of the characters from the fucking 
uh, two like uh, zombies doing commentary over uh, Last of Us One or some shit. Oh, They'll find God. some way I, to re-release of the Last of Us One again. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> so like I said, we're gonna be doing weekly from now on, back we're going, like how it used to yeah. be. Um, so you might have different people on. We'll see. I would, every week's gonna be different. We'll. Um, the, the ultimate goal for us is always gonna be around ninety minutes to two hours which we hit on today of course um and so don't expect three to four hour episodes anymore unless it's like a uh, top you know top 10 list or something um so mm. it works for everybody so thanks for watching y'all have a great night and see you later peace happy new year happy new year everybody <laughs>